Over the years, the Souls series has developed quite the cult following. In fact, one might say the Souls games embody the cult ideal more than any other. Fans followed it through publisher changes and across platforms. There's a specific standard that the games are held to, and the audience values these aesthetics to a clinical degree. So it goes without saying that Dark Souls 2 has a lot to live up to, and it's hard to review the game without comparing it to its predecessors. Dark Souls 2 is best described as a mixture of Demon Souls and Dark Souls. In some cases, this creates a much better experience, and in others, it falls miserably short. The game still offers a challenging, atmospheric world to explore with plenty of punishing bosses to fight, but some key design changes come across strange, lazy, and oftentimes completely unnecessary. In Demon's Souls, a player healed by using a consumable item. When FromSoft released Dark Souls, they altered the mechanic and replaced consumable healing items with the Estus Flask, a player item with limited uses that could be refilled at one of the numerous bonfires littered throughout the world. The change created a fantastic shift in playstyle. While healing was easy but limited in Demon's Souls, Dark Souls forced the player to really consider each chug of that glorious golden ambrosia. Dark Souls 2 brings back the Estus Flask, but also marks the return of consumable healing items. The addition comes off as strange, as having the consumable completely negates the initial purpose of the Estus Flask. Rather than putting thought into each heal, we simply bought a huge supply of consumable items and saved our Estus shots for the final boss. It's a needless addition, which just so happens to be the most recent game's biggest flaw. Dark Souls 2 is filled with needless additions. One of the biggest draws to the Souls franchise is the world it creates. The player is thrown into an interconnecting world with many paths that all loop back, creating shortcuts and an overall feeling of being something small trapped in somewhere immensely large. There was a special emotion that came along with opening a door in the previous games and suddenly finding yourself looking back at where you've been. Dark Souls 2 attempts to recapture this aesthetic, but fails due to some head-scratching design choices and sloppier level designs. Unlike previous games, warping from bonfire to bonfire is permitted from the very beginning, and with save points literally around every corner, we rarely found ourselves retracing our steps through any particular area. It makes shortcuts completely unnecessary, and makes many of the zones feel more like a Mega Man stage select, rather than a huge connected world. That's not even mentioning the logic-defying placement of some of the stages. In one instance, we were climbing a giant windmill. Upon reaching the top and fighting the boss, we jumped into an elevator that took us up. We could clearly see there was nothing above the windmill when we were standing just outside, so when the elevator doors opened to a huge castle submerged in a lake of molten lava, it was a bit of a surprise. Dark Souls 2 is full of instances like this. It not only breaks the world, but it comes across as undeniably lazy. The bosses in Dark Souls 2 also left us scratching our heads. There are a few truly epic experiences, but most of the encounters are against similar enemy variants. Around the fifth time we fought a large humanoid attacker with three standard attack variations, the experiences started to lose their shine. Worst, in instances where developers thought bosses were too easy, they simply added more enemies to the mix, which more often than not cheapened the entire experience. The Souls games are renowned for their boss encounters. Each one is intended to be observed, feared, and overcome with great trial. We got through most of our encounters in Dark Souls 2 on the first try by strafing left. There was never a good point where it felt like we were in a true Souls boss encounter. Even when the monsters are big, they never awed us like the first sighting of the Gaping Dragon, Dragon God, Ceaseless Discharge, or Tower Knight. Here's a secret though. Dark Souls 2 isn't about the single player experience. There's a reason why much of the PvE aspects of Dark Souls 2 falls short. The PvP has been refined to almost perfection. The equipment system is better, there's more armor, more weapons, attack options are expanded, players level faster, allowing for more builds, and the multitude of ways a player can connect has been refined and streamlined. Not allowing yourself to experience the interactive elements of Dark Souls 2 is essentially hamstringing your experience. It's easier to drop a co-op sign, and the reward for successfully helping another player is returning to human form, which then lets you summon other players into your game. 
There are covenants dedicated for invading specific areas, arenas for one-on-one -on -one battling, groups dedicated to invading players, and groups dedicated to coming to an invaded player's rescue. Mechanics like parries, backstabs, and shield breaks all have been altered to balance each PvP encounter. Despite the game's lineage of solitude and hardship, Dark Souls 2 begs you to play with other players. And the game is good. Really good. It still manages to offer a challenging and deep experience rarely found in other titles. It delivers on many of the standards its cult following has come to expect. That being said, it still never quite reaches the experience of its predecessors. There's a lack of balance and polish all over the game to the point of laziness. It's almost ironic that much of the game's lore focuses on want, because that's where Dark Souls delivers the most, leaving you wanting more.